Hello students, welcome to another interesting lesson from Beehive. This is the fifth lesson, The Snake and the Mirror. Now there is something interesting about this chapter. It's written by Vaikam Muhammad Bashir, but it is translated into English by V. Abdullah. So we are going to study this hilarious chapter right away. So first, let's know more about the authors of this chapter. Vaikam Muhammad Bashir. He is fondly known as Bepur Sultan. He was an Indian independence activist and writer of Malayalam literature. He was a humanist, freedom fighter, novelist and a short story writer. He is noted for his path-breaking, disarmingly down-to-earth style of writing that made him equally popular among literary critics as well as the common man. He is regarded as one of the most successful and outstanding writers from India. You can see a stamp issued on him right on the screen. So you can imagine that how important he was for our country. He was born on 21st January 1908 and he died on 5th July 1994 in Bepur. He was given many awards like Walathol Award, Muthu Varke Award, Kerala Sahitya Academy Fellowship, Kerala State Film Award for Best Story and many more. Now let's learn about V. Abdullah who has translated this work from Malayalam to English. He was born in 1921 near Kozaikot. His father B. Pokhar Sahib was a distinguished lawyer and a member of the constituent assembly that is from Lok Sabha. After graduating MA and BA, Abdullah joined Orient Longman from where he retired as a divisional director in charge of publication. He published many books of translations from Malayalam to English mainly in the area of prose, fiction, and including novels and stories by M. T. Vasudevan Nair, S. K. Potekat, Malayatur Ramakrishnan, N. P. Muhammad, and Vaikam Muhammad Bashir. In 1998, he received the Yatra Award. He produced two films in Malayalam, Amai Kanyan and Adya Kiran Mangal. For many years, he lived in Chennai. He passed away on 16th May 2003 at Kannur, Kerala after a brief illness. Now let's start the chapter. Here are the main characters from the story The Snake and the Mirror. So we have a homeopath doctor, we have doctor's friend and a snake. Now let me go through some difficult words or tricky words from the lesson. The first word I have for you is Gable which means the upper part of a wall below a sloping roof. You can even see the adjacent picture here, that triangular area that you see. Okay, that's called a cable. Then meager, meager means small in quantity, very less. Beneath means under. Tempted to means attracted. Bachelor means someone who is unmarried. Paced means walked. Third is a sound of falling down of something. Reedy means thin, sprinter who is a very fast runner, taken with means attracted by. Please learn these word meanings. They will be really helpful in understanding the lesson. Now let's start the story. The story starts with a question from a homeopath doctor to his friends that has a snake ever coiled itself around any part of your body and that to a full-blooded cobra? This creates silence in the room and then the doctor starts narrating his real life story related to this incident. So here is the story in first person. It was a hot summer night about 10 o'clock when the doctor had his meal at the restaurant and he returned to his room. He heard a strange noise as soon as he opened the door. But the sound was a familiar one. He could say that the rats and he shared the room together. So he took out his box of matches and lighted a kerosene lamp on the table. The house was not electrified. It was a very small rented house because 
he was not earning much amount from his practice as he was a newly set up medical practitioner and his earnings were very less he just had 60 rupees in his suitcase along with some shirts and dhotis he also had one good black coat which he was wearing then so he finally takes off his coat his shirt and as well as not so white vest and he hangs them all up and relaxes in the room he then tried to lay down but he could not sleep because it was very hot so he got up and went out to the veranda for little air but it looked like the wind god also seemed to have taken off that day he went back into his room and sat down on the chair then he opened the box beneath the table and took out one book the name of the book was materia medica it was a book on homeopathic medicines he opened it up at the table on which the lamp was kept and there was a large mirror as well and a small comb also laid beside the mirror now in those days the doctor was very much great admirer of beauty and he believed in making himself look handsome he was unmarried and he was a doctor on top so he felt that he had to take care of his looks he picked up a comb and he ran through his hair and adjusted parting them so that they looked straight and neat again he heard a strange sound above he took a close look at his face in the mirror and he again took another important decision he thought that he would shave daily and grow a thin moustache as these things makes him look more handsome. After all, he was a bachelor and he was a doctor too. So he looked again into the mirror and smiled. And it was an attractive smile. So this made him think of taking another decision that he would always keep that beautiful or attractive smile on his face so that he looks more handsome. After all, he was a bachelor, a doctor to on top of it. And again, he heard a strange noise coming from the roof above. He was again stuck with another lovely thought that he would marry and he would marry a girl who was not only a doctor and had lot of money and a good medical practice. But he also thought that her would-be wife had to be fat for a valid reason. And the reason was that if he would have made some silly mistake in future and he needed to run, then her wife should not be able to run after him and catch him. Suddenly, there came a dull thud as if a rubber tube had fallen to the ground. But he was thinking that there's surely nothing to worry about. So before he could turn around and take a look, he realized that a fat snake wriggled over the back of the chair and he landed on his shoulder. The snake was so close to his face that he was literally scared. Within seconds before he could think of something, the snake coiled itself on his upper arm and started looking into the mirror. The doctor turned into a stone because he was very much scared of the snake. He was not able to think whether he should move, do a mistake or sit like that on his chair like a statue without breathing or moving. In the light of the lamp, he sat there like a stone image in the flesh. He felt that the great presence of the creator of this world and his universe, that is the God, was there. He started feeling a lot of pain in his left arm and as if it was a thick leaden rod made up of molten fire. That means he started feeling the strength and the temperature of the snake who had coiled his upper arm. Remember he was not wearing clothes on his upper body. And the snake was slowly but powerfully crushing his arm. The doctor started cursing himself and thought that suppose if the snake bite him, then what was the medicine he had to take? 
as there were no medicines in the room. He also realized that how poor, foolish and a stupid doctor he is. And he forgot his danger and started laughing on himself, rather smiling on, his, on himself. Now suddenly the snake turned its head and he started looking into the mirror and saw its reflection. Now the doctor doesn't know whether it was a male snake or a female snake and was it admiring its own beauty. The doctor even thought that looks like the snake is watching him for the first time. So if it's a male snake that is he thinking that how to grow a moustache or if if that snake is a female that is she thinking that she should use a mascara or wear a vermilion on her forehead. Now the, suddenly the snake unwinds itself from his arm and slowly slithers into his lap and from there he craps into the table and moves toward the mirror. Perhaps the snake actually enjoyed its reflection and wanted to have a closer look. Now suddenly the doctor was a man of flesh and blood. Still holding his breath, he got up from his chair and quietly went out through the door into the veranda and from there he ran into the yard and ran till he could and saved his life. As the doctor was narrating this incident, one of his friends asked him that was his wife very fat? The doctor told his friend that no, God wanted something else and his life partner, that means his wife, is thin and fit athletic person who could run very fast. Then another friend asked the doctor that when he was running, did the snake also follow him? The doctor replied that he ran and ran till he reached a friend's house. And after reaching there, he smeared oil on all his body and then he finally took a bath. He changed into fresh clothes and he came back to his home next morning about 8.30 with his friend. And when he reached there, he found no snake. But that was not all. When he reached his home back, there was nothing left for him. Some thief who came in the previous night took almost everything. The room was totally cleaned. There was nothing left for the doctor except one final thing which was very insulting to him. So the friend asked what was that thing that you're talking about? So the finally the doctor said it was my vest the dirty one. The vest was so dirty and smelly that the thief did not took that away and left it in the room. The doctor thought that the thief was so much hygienic that he could not thought of washing it with soap and water. So finally, another friend asked the doctor again that did you see the snake the next day doctor? The doctor laughed that he had never seen the snake ever since. And then the doctor also told his friends that this was a snake who was actually taken by its own beauty. That means the snake was impressed by its own beauty. I hope that you literally enjoyed this funny story and also understood every part of it. Now I would like to thank you once again for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and like, comment and share. Take care and stay safe.